Here comes our celebrity stranger. Our former Do you know the golden rule of surviving in Villador? Don't trust anyone? That too. But there's an even more reliable adage. You're slow, you're dead. A night runner told me that years ago. And damn, he was right. You knew a night runner? Yeah. Dated him even. But we split up. I couldn't keep up with him. <laughs> Get it? No, well, shit happens. I mean, have you ever seen a vigilante and a pumpkin farmer form a healthy relationship? Anyway, you're this pilgrim that just came to town, aren't you? I heard that you're a hell of a runner and a climber. Ooh, guilty, Your Honor. Well, maybe you can make use of this thing my boyfriend left at my house. A Night Runner's journal. It's got a map of the Night Runner's lethal challenge. He designed it. Man, was he proud. Most just couldn't hack it, breaking their arms and legs all the time. Nothing made the fucker happier. I'm guessing he was the course champion? Obviously. And I'm guessing you'd never do half as good as him. But if you look over his sketches, you could certainly learn a lot. He had some badass moves and he documented them all. So, you're just giving me the journal? You can have it. But only if you have the guts to challenge and beat the track yourself. more if you want to get perfect. I don't believe it. My boyfriend would be so pissed off. I'm thrilled though. Would love to see you break that record again. Anyway, as promised, here's my boyfriend Anton's old journal. Use it wisely. Why? Why what? Why will you look like an asshole? Oh, because my new supplier, Edgar, has turned out to be a man of his word, which is very rare these days. And I can't screw up our first transaction. I just can't. And it's all because earlier I accidentally kicked the table leg so hard that I could barely stand. <laughs> Forget about walking. 
Now let me guess. You'd like me to run an errand for you. Well, yes. Precisely. Run. And fast. You'd save my ass. And my business. <laughs> well, running is one of my specialties. Oh, thanks, Hayden. Don't thank me just yet. Where, where do you want me to run? I promised Edgar that if he brought me flour, I would exchange it for crow's eggs. <laughs> Don't laugh. No bullshit. Seriously. The flour arrived as promised, but without you, he won't get the eggs. And he'll think I've swindled him. Won't even give me the chance to explain my injuries, either. Can't say that I'd blame him. I wouldn't trust me, either. But I know where the nests are. I can mark their locations for you. And what is he gonna do with crow eggs? Those birds will eat anything, so I imagine their eggs taste like crap. He wants to make a tree cake for his wife. It's a special cake that you turn on a spit, like lamb, so the heat burns out any impurities in the ingredients. He's angered his wife and wants to apologize to her. She occasionally mentions a tree cake that her grandmother once made. They say it's delicious. Then, will you save my business and Edgar's marriage? I'll give it a shot. Uh, how many crow eggs does he need? The more the better. Apparently, there are 40 eggs in the original recipe. Of course, those were chicken eggs. Who would eat crow eggs back then, right? Anyway, it's important he gets those eggs, so I don't lose his trust. Trust is priceless. It would be for anyone, right? I thank you in advance. Only Aiden, you know how fragile eggs are. You don't handle them carefully, and, well, the yolk's on you. the eggs? Wonderful. And they're all intact. My god, you're a genius, Aiden. Anyway, if you feel like helping again, you can always hunt for more eggs. Basket is on the table. Damn. 47. Wait, what? 55 minus 8 is 47. Oh. A smart alley, are ya? Well, for me, that's one jar less, so there you friggin' go. No need to be so pleased with yourself. You need more jars? There are no more jars, wise ass. Why do you think I'm sulking over the eight I lost? The problem with people is that they take things for granted. Things like glass. It's been around for ages, made from a naturally abundant material. Sand. Sand! Add soda, ash, and limestone, and presto. You have glass. Friggin' simple as that. 
Not anymore, it isn't. You bet. Not with the industry dead and transportation between settlements non-existent. So, I guess you can't afford to break any more jars. And that's exactly what my boys have been excelling at lately. Look, I know it's not easy to clamber around the city with jam on your back, but I mean, there has to be someone who can do it without falling and breaking a jar. Or am I asking too much? It depends on who you ask. Well, I'll be damned. You're cocky, and you got balls. Jar's on the table if you're ready for the challenge. <coughs> I keep telling everyone we should be getting ready for winter. How you doing, Aiden? Don't forget, be careful with those. They will break if you fall from too hot. I delivered your precious jars. That was neat. And I mean that literally. Come back if you're ever of a mind to help me out again. No. You have a very colorful philosophy. And yet, I don't have the dyes to match it. I can, however, make beautiful clothes. I'm really quite good at it. Want me to show you? Come here. I only have blue fabric because this cloth is meant to become uniforms. I can create whole worlds out of fabric, but only a blue world. Now, how would a uniformly blue world make you feel? So you're a seamstress, hmm. What do you make? Bears. Toys for children. But adults sometimes want to have a teddy bear, too, now. Perhaps you'd like to have one. Well, I don't know. Blue is so noble. And I have come to hate it. Tell me, would you be willing to help me with something? Do dyes other than blue still exist? Well, certainly. But only a concoction of crushed berries will do. And ordinary paints. Unlikely. Okay, how would I get some for you? The military had a supply used to create secret markings. But then everything ceased to be secret and... Well, you know the rest. So many things fell by the wayside. Many colors of dye can be found all over, actually. People have told me they've seen containers, but in places too high or too dangerous to reach. I, I have a map that shows where. I'll bring him to you. Well, thank you. But you have to hurry. Some containers have been left in the open too long in the sun, and the dye will be ruined. Okay, got it. Please, hurry.
Here's what I found. Oh, I adore you. If you ever wanted a teddy bear or a rabbit or uh, a zebra, would you like a zebra? Just say so and I will make you one for free. That's a generous offer. Well, uh, apparently, more dyes have been spotted in other districts. If you have some extra time. People massacred in the tower. Problems? Oh, yeah. Big ones. Did you know Amir? A skinny, always grinning teenager? He's dead. I know, it's not unusual these days, in a bad way, but I thought this particular boy was classically immortal. And then... Will you help me? And with what? Something Amir used to do? Yes. He handed out field reports to cadets for their survival training. What, um, what happened to him? Routine tends to make one... inattentive. This boy had been running and jumping across rooftops like a gazelle, forever. And then he missed a step. Just once. Uh, survival training? Cadets must spend the night outside the security zones beginning on their own. To keep from exposing them to unnecessary danger, we collect data from our patrols. Amir would deliver these field reports to the cadets. Will you do this in his stead? I'll do my best. Thank you, Aiden. The main thing is not to mix up the order, or else the cadets could get into trouble. Drop it in their lockers on your way, they'll check in later. Check the route and distribution sequence on the table. Then hurry. They must receive the most up-to-date field information possible. Godspeed, Aiden. You've been around a while. You're practically one of us now. I delivered the field reports. Your beloved cadets should be safe. Thank you for being so reliable. Here, you know what? I got this old map of the city one of my students found on the field. Maybe this will help you get around.
Don't worry about it. You only just made me lose a lot. But what the hell? Next time, I'd still bet on you. No risk, no fun, eh? Time to take? Wow, you beat my time. You can really fly. 
I'll make sure everyone knows there's a new cat in the sky. And please, do that again. It's a pleasure to see you fly. There's a nest here. There are abandoned nests all over the place. But there are eggs in it. That's impossible. What are their colors? White, with dots. Brown dots? That's right. How many are there? Six? Uh, five. <laughs> Sparrow Hook! Oh, wait, and I love you! If nature is returning to the city, it means the air is getting cleaner. The amount of chemical particulates in the air is going down. Get away from the nest at once. But what about the tape recorder? No self-respecting bird watcher would disturb a nesting bird. Let's hope the young hatch. Yeah, they're probably safe here. I think so. Thank you, Aiden. This is really a great day for me. I'm glad I could help. Can you hear me? I don't know how much longer. Hello? Piece of crap. You're the one? I found an old radio. Someone needs help, but the signal's too weak, even on a roof. Okay, savior of the oppressed. Get closer to something that'll boost the signal. Ever hear of an antenna? Thanks, Luan. Try not to fall, okay?
Hello, Lance. Can you hear me now? Locked up. Fucking electrical substation. Downtown. There's... Chance. The lowest level. The lowest level of the downtown electrical substation. Right, Lance? Oh, come on. Can you hear me? Infected. Infected are coming. I'm on my way. Hold on. Lance, where are you? They almost got me. Please. But where? I, I can't see anything. Our gate. Blocked. There must be another entrance. Anyone. Please. Repeat. I need help. Can anyone hear me? I hear you. Oh, shit. Looks like I'm too late. By a few years. This is Lance Gallagher. The supplies are running low. I don't know how much longer I can last. I ran in here to try to get away from them. They're clawing at the door. I'm trapped. Fucking electrical substation. But there's still a chance. If anyone can hear me, I'm on the lowest level of the electrical substation. Downtown. Oh, God. They're coming! Infected! They're coming! Please! Oh god! They're finally gone! Safe! I'm safe! This is Lance Gallagher. The supplies are running low. This recording must have been made years ago. And when the electricity went on, it started playing in a loop. Whoa.